What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and when it comes to modeling buildings in Revit, a really important part is presentation and showing them off in a uh, really nice and aesthetic way. So for this, I think it's really important to have an appropriate background for your model. Now, in some cases, it might be just a uh, just a gradient or just a color. In other cases, it might be something like the sky in the background, or sometimes you want to have a realistic image of the background where that building is going to is supposed to be built, or uh, you might want an abstract background that's just going to make everything look cool. Sometimes that is important as well. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a cool uh, background for Revit. What are all the tools and features and settings and options that Revit has on offer when it comes to uh, creating or placing a background behind our uh, model. So that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. Now, if you're interested in some uh, courses on Revit, uh, I have multiple courses on my website. I have courses that are either on the advanced level, but also I have some uh, beginner courses as well. For example, I have a complete beginner to intermediate level course. It's a 16-hour course that gets you from a complete novice to someone who can actually finish uh, complex building designs and produce all of the necessary uh, project documentation, which I think is really important uh, as well. So uh, if you're interested in my courses, check out my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link in the description of this video. And also check out my Patreon. That's going to be the second link there. You can find all of my Revit project files. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. Okay, so here we are in Revit, as you can see, and I'm using my office building project. It's available uh, on my Patreon as a course, and also you can get the project files, and soon it will be available on my website, balkanarctic.com, as a one-time purchase for a course. Uh, it's like 13 hours long, and you pretty much explore how to uh, build this very complex office building. But anyways, now let's explore how to add the background to this building. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is uh, first showing you the kind of the uh, non-realistic uh, or re representation uh, for 3D views and how to add background there and then later on I'm going to be showing you how to add in realistic views the background for renderings things like that okay so for non-realistic views uh, you can set those up here uh, in the uh, visual styles so when you open up uh, that menu uh, you get the graphic display options and when you open that up uh, here we have the background and now we can set the background so we have multiple options currently it's set to none that's why we have the white background uh, we can set that to sky and then hit apply and as you can see it makes sort of a gradient uh, I feel like it's a radial gradient but just a very large radial gradient like this from very dark blue to some lighter blue to some grayish blue and ending up with gray here on the bottom uh, now here you can see that we have this ground color uh, uh, option or setting which is set to gray and that's this color over here uh, so basically the horizon is wherever the horizon is and then uh, from the horizon down it's going to show that gray ground color and from the horizon up it's going to show the uh, show the sky uh, so uh, one quick tip uh, before we continue on if you want to hide that gray part which I usually like to do I find it uh, extremely annoying uh, to see that uh, gray horizon line what they like to do is move to the site plan if I can only find it here there we go site plan uh, here you can see the site plan now in this case we're watching the building from this corner here kind of add the building so I'm just going to select the whole topography go into edit surface and then uh, I can select this point and as you can see it's at minus 100 so I'm just going to go here to place point add the elevation of something like 400 and then add Let's see, okay, so it's outside the boundary, that's giving us problems. Uh, okay, so in that case, maybe we can just select this one and move it to 400. There we go. And then also we can add a few points that are at uh, maybe minus 100 here. And then all around here, just like that, because we don't want to mess this up too much. So maybe do something that looks like that, maybe one at 300 here, kind of towards the edge, like 
that here as well. There we go. So once we have something like this, and if I just hit finish and go back to the 3D view, as you can see, that kind of brings up the topography a little bit. Uh, so it hides that ground. And that's what I often like to do because I, I just find that extremely annoying to see. Okay, so that's one option. Uh, of course, in realistic, it looks way better probably. Let's try that. Wait for a second for it to respond. Okay, it might be too dark. Let's go back to hidden line. Anyways, uh, let's go back here to graphic display options. Now the second option is, let's see, uh, instead of sky, we have the gradient, which is really cool. If I hit apply, as you can see, it's going to create a gradient. Again, we have the ground color, which doesn't really matter anymore because we hit it. Uh, but we have a gradient from the top color to the bottom color. Currently, the top color is this. You can set it up to maybe something like that. And then the bottom color to something like this. I don't know. And you can just kind of play around. You can make it look really weird. Uh, or you can make it look really nice, depending on whatever you're trying to achieve. So, for example, if I hit this, okay, that might look a bit nicer. So, as you can see, it's basically playing around with these two colors. It's just a linear radiant from top to bottom. And, of course, you can use completely different colors. If you want, you can create something kind of... Uh, weird like this. And finally we have the image option. Now it allows you to go here and add a customizable image. So you go to here to customize image. Uh, you search for the image and that opens up, well, wherever you've, you've stored that image. And here for, uh, for this, uh, let me just drag this image here to desktop. There we go. Let's try background one. As you can see, it's this image. Uh, now, uh, the image format is rarely going to kind of correspond with the format of your view. So we have the option either to stretch it, place it on the original size, crop it with width, which in this case doesn't work because it would leave empty kind of space on top and bottom, or crop it by height, which will work because then it will go from height from top to bottom, but it will get cropped out here on the sides. So uh, just make sure that you either set it to width or height. I think stretch is kind of a weird one. I don't like that. And original size, again, uh, does, uh, rarely works out well. So uh, make sure to either go with width, but if you get this, these white, uh, white lines on top and bottom, then go with height. And then uh, let's just click OK, apply, and it's going to add that image in the background. And in this case, the image probably doesn't really correspond very well with the, with the building, but uh, depending on uh, your project and the perspective and the angle of the view, uh, you can, of course, align it much, uh, much, much better. OK, so that uh, basically covers the uh, uh, that basically covers the uh, non-realistic uh, views. Now let's take a look at realistic views. Okay, so now the realistic views, we have to open up the rendering dialog. So for that, we have to go here to view, uh, find render, there we go, rendering. And then here we have the background. Now currently it's set at sky. Now we have sky without clouds, with very few clouds, a uh, few clouds, and we have cloudy, and then we have very cloudy. Now, unless you're trying to create some, I don't know, weird end of the world chaotic uh, rendering, uh, in most cases, uh, very, very cloudy and cloudy, I would, uh, I, I would kind of stay away from those. Uh, very few clouds is something that they usually use. Let's set it up just to draft, just a low quality rendering, just to test it out uh, to see what that looks like. Let's give Rabbit a few moments to kind of figure out what it's doing and hopefully render this. Okay, so this is what we get for the very few cloud setting. And just a quick demonstration, this is what you get for a few clouds. Uh, this is what you get for cloudy. This is what you get for very cloudy. And then this is no clouds. So uh, just to go over all of these sky settings, that's pretty much what you're going to get. Uh, then we have the color, which is kind of self-explanatory, just adds a color back uh, behind your building. So it's nothing fancy. Uh, you can use it maybe if you want to render something a and have a white or a black background or just a one color background. In those cases, it does make sense to add just one color. So in this case, as you can see, we have just blue, but it doesn't look natural. So uh, in my opinion, uh, don't do this uh, unless you have something really specific that you're trying to achieve. Uh, I, I either go with either white or black or some gray color in between. Uh, usually I don't go with any any actual color uh, because I think it looks kind of 
odd as you can see over here uh, moving on uh, also we have the uh, image option so that's uh, the same one that we already had for previous one so uh, let's try here search for an image let's go with this background number two so it's this image uh, now again uh, let's try height so for example uh, this one is a bit higher than the original image so when you set it to height it would add these white lines uh, on each side so if we set it to width it's kind of going to uh, crop it in such a way where it perfectly fits the height uh, and then the width is kind of uh, cropped out a little bit okay so let's click ok and then let's render and see what that looks like now of course in renderings it's going to be a lot better using an image but you do have to play around a little bit with the brightness of it, the image uh, against the brightness uh, and uh, the whole feel of your uh, building so for example in this case it kind of works because the the brightness of the building almost matches the the background and here you can go to adjust exposure maybe make it warmer or cooler or something like that but as you can see it will affect both the image in the background as well as your model so it might make sense to maybe open up Photoshop or something like that for the background and add it to that image there or you can find a bunch of free uh, image editing software uh, in a lot of cases and then finally we have the uh, we have the oops <laughs> we have the transparent option uh, now for the transparent option if we set that up and hit render that's going to give us the model without any background then this is really useful if you prefer adding the background later on in post-production in, in a software like Photoshop or something like that uh, it makes sense to then uh, render this building without any background as you can see over here you get that kind of a checkerboard background and also when you finish this rendering uh, you will see that here a saved project has been grayed out now in all previous renderings that we have created saved project was available uh, but for this one it's not that's because Revit doesn't allow you to save uh, renderings without a background so you can only export and save this image on your computer you can't save it on your uh, you can't save it here on the on the project so just keep that uh, keep that in mind okay so that's pretty much it as far as backgrounds in Revit those are the options that you have uh, I have gone through all of the all of the available options and then you can make an informed decision on what fits your project uh, best okay so that's pretty much it for this tutorial I hope it was fun and interesting if you're looking in uh, if you're looking for some courses uh, in Revit where I take the extra time uh, to teach you about some of the com more complex topics I have both beginner intermediate as well as advanced courses on my website balkanarctic.com make sure to check it out and for all of my Revit project files check out my patreon that's going to be the second link in the description okay so that's pretty much it thank you for watching make sure to subscribe like and share this video if you have any questions comments or suggestions for any future tutorials make sure to leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day